Hi, I'm Erin. This week on the ranch has been like no other. Our friends Dave and Tammy are here visiting and Mike has kept them busy on the ranch. This year's garden season is off to an extremely slow start due to weeks of below zero temperatures. And we were lucky to get a break in the weather with some warmer temperatures and a day of abundant sunshine. I put Dave to Tammy to work here in the high tunnel and we get some of our soil prep done for the upcoming growing season on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Every growing season is different, and a large amount of my success or my failure is determined by my ability to adapt. We had a pretty nice winter without much bitter cold until February hit. Since then, it's been pretty brutal. Until our temperatures warm up into the more normal range, there is nothing too much happening in the gardens. There's no transplanting of lettuce, and there's no putting seeds in the ground. Our soil temperatures, they have to recover before we're gonna have any success. Until winter breaks, we are put on hold. One thing though that can be done is cleaning out the new high tunnel from last summer. Garden cleanup is not my strong suit. <laughs> I'm often really ready to be done when the frost comes. So I picked my green tomatoes last October and I left the plants in the high tunnel to be dealt with until another day. The day has come and with extra hands, the job will go extremely fast. Since Dave and Tammy were here last summer when we were putting in irrigation in the high tunnel, I thought that it would be fitting to have them help with the cleanup and the removal of the irrigation before the soil prep. Last year at this time, um, I had the opportunity to be in the high tunnel and, and assist with putting in irrigation, and it was um, August. Uh, July or August? We it was were, July. Yeah, we were July, July we were here. And of course it was warm outside. So this year we're back and it is in March and um, when it's zero and negative temperatures outside, I walk into the high tunnel and it's like, oh, this is wonderful. I feel like I'm almost back at home. I was able to remove two layers of clothing and it's really nice inside the high tunnel. It smells nice and earthy. It was almost like walking out of a freezer into an oven. <laughs> Going in the high tunnels in the winter is always a unique experience for people. It can be 20 degrees outside and easily 100 degrees inside if the sun is shining like it is today. It feels like summer and it smells like summer in here. On days in the winter where it's nice enough to open and roll up the door, it feels like there's hope that spring will come. We just have a few simple things that I want to get done today. Clean up the dead foliage, remove the irrigation, and bring in some composted manure. The plant material is raked, gathered, and moved to outside the tunnel. The leftover tomato vines will not be composted. They will be thrown in the garbage. Generally, tomatoes are not composted, although it can be done. If your plants show any type of disease or fungus, you do not want to put the vines into your compost pile. The fungus and the disease can survive the composting process and some, it can come back to haunt you the next year. I like to err on the side of caution and even though these plants showed no signs of disease last year, they will be headed to the garbage bin. The drip line is disconnected from our solid irrigation lines and the landscape staples are removed. A hammer and a pitchfork make handy tools for prying out staples that have been in the ground for months. Tammy gets all of the drip line moved over to the side and out of the way. Then the solid irrigation lines can be removed from the irrigation timer. They are added to the pile by the sidewall and the tunnel looks substantially cleaner and ready for compost. Today is a great day to check the tunnels for any damage and do any required maintenance. Now we check the tunnels often when the wind and snow is blowing, but right now it's a lot easier and we can be more thorough. I like to put eyes on the wiggle wire and make sure there are no holes forming. The double track system seems to be working great and the thick 12 mil woven plastic is also holding up really well. Over in the old high tunnel, I do find a hole. It's in a rather weird spot, and it's not in our usual wear and tear locations. It almost seems as some sort of projectile or something possibly went through it. The gator makes a great ladder when you don't want to fight ice and snow. Luckily, the hole isn't too high up on the lid of the tunnel, so I just needed a little bit of a boost. The highly fancy and proper way to repair high tunnel plastic is with tape. 
They make expensive greenhouse tape and I swear that I have some somewhere, but I can't find it. I have found over the years that Gorilla Clear Repair Tape works just as well as the greenhouse tape and is substantially cheaper, plus I can buy it in town. While we were taping, I noticed that some of the tech screws have worked their way loose from the ribs. This is an easy fix. I just need to replace the missing screws and tighten the loose ones up. If these were not replaced, the next time we had some strong winds, we could get some lifting of the ribs and some large amounts of movement could start happening to the frame of the high tunnel, which would just lead to more and more problems. Back over at the sales barn, Dave has the bobcat fired up and the bucket gets put on. We head out to the field to the composted manure pile to see if it's thawed enough to get some scooped up. The pile is extremely frozen. We head back over to the tunnel and the first load is moved into the high tunnel with the bobcat. The tractor bucket is <laughs> bigger than the bobcat, so I hop in the tractor to bring us more compost and Dave runs it into the tunnel with the bobcat. Everything is going great until Tammy notices that the gator is smoking and upon further inspection, we find that it is leaking coolant. Okay. Tammy takes the gator back to the shop and I head back out for a couple more loads of compost. Dave, he headed back over to the shop to help Tammy with the gator and so I unload the compost in front of the tunnel and close up the door and I call it a day. Dave and Tammy's project list isn't done yet though. They head back over to the farmhouse to finish up the countertop project that they've been working on all week with Mike. You get your list of chores to do and right in the midst of it the gator battery goes dead or um, you know they call from um, the bread store saying you know we've got a load of bread available if you if you can come and get it I mean you take advantage of opportunities when they when you when you get them and so um, that that list has to be very flexible and then also you know the weather I mean I think for the first Four days we were here, we didn't get above zero. Uh, I think it went ranged from 18 below to two below zero. Thank goodness we didn't have a whole lot of wind, but uh, it still really affected my stamina. Yeah, it slowed us down, um, but it didn't slow down all the chores that need to be done. When you look at the amount of work that it takes, um, you've got to have dedication and commitment to keep the ranch going, take care of the livestock. Um, and then film uh, a YouTube channel, um, coming up with the creative topics and, and, and just what it takes to put, put a product out that people will enjoy watching from a learning and entertainment standpoint. Still raising kids and, and having, you know, having a life you know, with the family. It's, it's a lot to juggle, and that's pretty much what it is. You're, it's, you're juggling a lot of, a lot of things, and, and then all the other pressures that come on um, as well that, you know, uh, people demanding uh, your time. So you're, you know, you're, you're answering emails and your, um, you know, comments and, and just, it just, uh, it's amazing, uh, especially like the 24, first 24 hours after a video goes out or the herd report goes out. Uh, when people start watching and listening you know, and reading, then, then they immediately, um, you know, it's fresh on their mind. They send comments, and um, and Mike and Aaron, they, you know, stop what they're doing and, and start replying back, you know, to everybody to, you know, appreciate, you know, the comments and, and your input. But juggling the work that um, it just takes to day to day sustain the ranch and the YouTube channel, and then look to take on additional responsibilities and projects um, you know there's only 24 hours in a day and I don't know how they're gonna stretch it anymore because we're pushing 20 now <laughs> well we've been here a week I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired 
Uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. It's, um, it's a bucket list item for us. Uh, we have a little hobby farm uh, that, that we enjoy, but um, you know, I, I guess I knew it was going to be somewhat like this, but it, it still was way beyond what I expected it to be, and, uh, but enjoyed every minute of it. It's been a wonderful week. I have, my eyes have really been opened to um, the behind the scenes, more so of what you see on YouTube. Um, it's been tiring, I'll admit, I'm tired too. Um, but what these young folks do is just amazing to me. Raising, just like Dave said, raising three small children, all the other commitments that there are, their YouTube channel and all of the animals that they care for here. It's amazing, and my hat's off to them both. They're dear, sweet people. Well, we've, we've been subscribers. Um, I believe almost, we were very, very fortunate. We found the channel uh, not long after uh, Mike and Aaron launched it. So we've been subscribers for practically two years and and watch, as we've said, we binge watched some of the videos because we pick up stuff each time uh, so having the opportunity to actually come and switch from a being a subscriber to actually being a I don't know if you want to call it a participant, a contestant, or whatever, but actually doing the chores that we've been watching, the biggest surprise to me was YouTube does not do it justice. When you sit there and and I'm going to say Cracker Jack, for instance. That is one huge cow. I mean, you know, looking at that steer and him standing there, I mean, you just hope he doesn't get upset. I hope everybody has enjoyed watching this as much as we've enjoyed doing it. And um, yeah, we're getting ready to switch back to, we're gonna be just a subscriber and watch what Mike and Aaron put out next week, just like everybody else. But uh, just having this opportunity has been I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, it's, it's a bucket list for us. And so we've had the chance to do it. And I hope you've enjoyed it because, well, there's no way you enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed doing it. But uh, It I hasn't been easy, but it's been enjoyable. Yeah. We don't have any trouble going to sleep at night, that's for sure. But uh, it's, uh, it's time to get back to the reality of the rushes. <laughs> so thank you for following us. Um, in what we like to say, our North Carolina, our Wyoming life series. <laughs>